Hello, weary YouTube travelers. You have stumbled into Dark and Creepy Diamond Painting's Tales Crypt. Please, do come in, sit down, anywhere will do. And please do make yourself comfortable. Go ahead and you can grab a work in progress, a drink, and even a snack if you'd like. We might be here a while. Oh, um, no, I'm sorry, no, I do not have Disney Plus on the TV. But, you know, that's okay, because what I do have is a book of those stories right here. Yeah, but these tales, these are the original version of the stories that Disney has glammed up for you soft souls. You'll find no such coddling here, my friend. We do not harbor Disney adults in the dark and creepy crypt, though we probably could because Disney adults? Ugh. Anyway... Let's begin our journey into the dark and more original side of Disney's most beloved animated movies. Today's tale is that of Dark Disney. Before I dive in and ruin your childhood for you, uh, let me tell you what tools of the trade I'll be using today. I was showing you at the beginning of the video, we will be using an ephemera 3D tray. Etsy shop. We will be using these crafty corner release papers. They're dark and creepy diamond painting half sheets and the set of fall plaid sheets in the four by four inch. And we're working on a canvas procured from Timu and it is a festive holiday season piece. Um, also, yes, we will be using Brains Alien Putty. Also, I will be using a 3D printed straightener from Zodiac Shadows on Etsy. All right, everything that I've mentioned will be linked in the description box down below. I'm anxious, so let's dive in to the first story and see if I can't, I don't know, spoil childhood for you. Tale number one, Cinderella. Glass slippers, an endearing fairy godmother, helpful mice. That's what usually comes to mind at the mention of this story of Cinderella. There have been several versions of the story spanning multiple eras and cultures, but Disney credits their version to Charles Perrault's 1697 version by the name Cinderellan as its inspiration for the film. However, the Grimm Brothers' 19th century version, itself an adaptation of Peralt's, is much, much darker. In their version, the fairy godmother doesn't exist. Instead, and pardon my pronunciation, please, Aschenputel, German for Ash Fool, is given the dresses for the three balls that she attends from a tree that she planted and watered with her own tears beside her mother's grave. Cinderella may be one of the most classic Disney stories, and while it sticks to a similar narrative, the original is far more gruesome than Disney portrays. First of all, the only reason the prince gets the golden slipper, not glass slipper, is that he lays a trap on the stairs so that he could find out who she was. You guys, that's a huge red flag. Side note, warning, if a man bear traps the stairs to try to catch you to meet you, that's not a good guy. <laughs> anyway, perhaps the most noteworthy difference is the fate of the stepsisters. Clearly, the Grimm brothers felt that their exploits should see them suffer more, and suffer the sisters did. When the prince comes trying to find out who the owner of the slipper is, the evil stepsisters resort to cutting off parts of their own feet to try to fit into the slippers. One cuts off her toes, the other sister cuts off her heels, and... It's only from the blood dripping from the shoes that gives them away. This results in the slipper filling with blood and leaving a trail and a pool on the floor. And in the end, 
The sisters were so desperate to taste some of the spotlight at Cinderella's royal wedding that they accompanied her up and down the aisle, something which Cinderella's loyal flock of birds took issue with, and they punished the sisters by pecking their eyes out. The end. Oh, you would like to hear another? Okay, well, I have another story here. Tale 2, The Little Mermaid. The Little Mermaid trades her voice for legs in order to win the prince's heart and live happily ever after. Or so goes the Disney rendition of this tale. This story originated from Denmark's 1837 The Little Mermaid, written by Hans Christian Andersen. In his version, we see the Little Mermaid save the prince from drowning, but she doesn't receive recognition for it. And because of that, she becomes deeply depressed. Her feelings are only heightened by learning that mermaids live for only 300 years, and then they turn to sea foam. The Little Mermaid then seeks out the sea witch who, in the original story, makes a disastrous deal with her. In return for legs, the witch cuts out the mermaid's tongue and keeps her beautiful singing voice. While the trade with the sea witch still occurs in the Disney version, the penalty for failure isn't just turning back into a mermaid. Mm -mm. It's death. Every step she takes makes her feel like she's walking on daggers, but she still dances for the prince and soon becomes his favorite companion. Apparently, seeing the mermaid as kind of a mute pet. So, a happily ever after then? No, not quite. Well, why not? Couldn't she just be content being the prince's mute pet? Well, not just that, but the prince ends up marrying another girl, who he mistakenly believes was the one to save him from the shipwreck. And just before the morning of the wedding, the Little Mermaid's sisters sell their hair to bring her a dagger. If she kills the prince, his dripping blood will cause her feet to become fins again. Unable to kill the man she loves, the mermaid throws herself into the sea and accepts her fate. Upon hitting the water, she turns to sea foam and is gone forever. And that is the end of The Little Mermaid. Would you like another? Okay. Tale 3, Sleeping Beauty. This is one of Disney's most classic and iconic movies, but it too has a seriously disturbing original. Disney's princess is cursed by a dark fairy named Maleficent to die after pricking her finger on a spinning wheel. But a blessing from a good fairy causes her to instead fall into a deep sleep until she is awakened by true love's kiss. How romantic, right? Well, in fact, even the Disney version was called into question when parents sparked outrage on Twitter by suggesting it should not be shown to children due to the kissing of an unconscious woman. Can anyone say consent issues here? Well, little did everyone know that whatever you think about Disney's version, the issue of consent is where the original tale, Sun Moon and Talia by Gian Battista Bazil gets really disturbing. The original story is from 1634 and it sees the princess prick her finger with a splinter of poisonous flax and placed into one of her father's estates. But that, my friends, is where the similarities end. In the original, a king who happens across the estate wanders in and finds the princess's sleeping body. Failing to wake her with his kiss, he then proceeds to S.A. her. And if that wasn't bad enough, the princess later gives birth to twins while still 
unconscious. Yes, you heard me. She was still unconscious when she gave birth to twins. When she gave birth to the twins, one of them started suckling her finger, the one with the splinter, and suckles the splinter from her finger, which then wakes her up. When the king returns to his castle, the one that impregnated the princess, his wife secretly learns the truth of his transgression and calls for the twins to come to the kingdom, where she orders the chef to kill them and serve them to the king. Unable to do so, the chef hides the children and tricks the wife. The wife then invites Talia, the mother slash princess, over, where she plans to burn her alive. But her machinations are foiled by the king, and the wife is burnt to death instead. The king, Talia, and their twins live happily ever after. So, all the king had to do really was burn his wife so that he can then move in his princess and their twins. And I guess the princess was quite all right with like... I don't know, pricking her finger as a young lady and going unconscious and waking up, finding that she had babies and if, okay, well, that's the story, guys. Uh, totally believable, right? Um, hmm. Another tale I have for you is tale number four, Snow White. The original German fairy tale isn't all too much different from the version that most people are familiar with. In the fairy tale, though, the evil queen stepmother does not ask for Snow White's heart in a box, but instead asks for her liver and lungs to eat for dinner, naturally. She is also already dead by the time the prince finds her, but he falls in love with her anyway, and as he carts her coffin away, to do only God knows what with, the piece of poisonous apple dislodges from her throat when they hit a bump and she awakens. And as punishment for her evil deeds, the queen, she's forced to wear a pair of glowing hot iron shoes placed before her with tongs and put them on her feet and dance in them until she drops dead the end. But wait, we're just getting started. I have a couple more tales for you. Don't go anywhere. Tale 5, Beauty and the Beast. The Disney adaptation of the classic French fairy tale about inner beauty is also a version that doesn't stray too far from the original. Beauty and the Beast was a French fairy tale written in 1740. Both versions have roses playing an integral role in the story, a cursed prince who must find love as a beast, and a beautiful girl unaware of her looks and only interested in books. Beauty is the youngest of 12 children to a rich merchant who loses all the family wealth in a storm. In the chaos of the storm, the merchant stumbles across a castle for shelter, and he is set up for the night with food and warmth. The next day, he plucks a rose for beauty, but is confronted by the beast. To save his life, the merchant must send beauty to live with the beast. In the original fairy tale, the beast releases a homesick beauty to go visit her family on one condition. She must return within the week. When her sisters hear of this, they display some sisterly love and try to get her to stay in the hopes that it would anger the beast and that he would eat her alive when she returned late. Also, in the original fairy tale, Beauty, she happens to be half fairy and the beast, he turns out to be her cousin. The end. <laughs> The next story is tale number six, Peter Pan. Now, Peter Pan is known to be a mischievous boy who refuses to grow up. 
kind of like every other man I know. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. Kind of kidding. Not looking at you, Sundown, I swear. Um... But anyway, <laughs> Peter Pan's character debuted occurring as a side character in the novel The Little White Bird in 1902 by J.M. Barry. Peter's obsession with youth stemmed from feeling replaced when his mother had another child. And feeling replaced, he ran away to Neverland to stay the same age forever. There, he lived in a world where he killed pirates and the Lost Boys, who grow up, and always seeing danger as entertainment instead of something to be feared. An extract from J.M. Barry's Peter Pan and Wendy is as follows. Quote, the boys on the island vary, of course, in numbers, according as they get killed and so on. And when they seem to be growing up, which is strictly against the rules, Peter, he thins them out. So if you're growing up too fast, or at all for that matter, Peter will thin you out. Hence the ever-changing number of the Lost Boys. I bet you didn't know that Peter Pan, the story, has been interpreted in many, many ways. And there are some really super dark interpretations. And a lot of those refer to the general creepiness of Pan's continual kidnapping of the Darling family. What's up with that? I mean, their name, Darling, it's usually something a mother calls their children. Could it be that the Darling children's mother is actually his mother and he's trying to kidnap the children to take them away from her because of his misguided feelings about being replaced by other children his mother had could they be his siblings that's one thought and another thought is that you know he feels like he was robbed of having a mother, and so he wants to rob other children of mothers. It's just a whole thing, but it's really odd that he really, like, hyper-focuses on the Darling family. And so I kind of lean toward the interpretation that the Darling children are really his siblings that replaced, air quotes, replaced him, for which he ran away. But anyway, I digress. So, at the story's climax, Wendy and her brothers attempt to head home but are captured by Captain Hook, who also poisons Peter's medication. Tinkerbell drinks the poison to save Peter's life and warns him of the kidnappings. Peter easily kills Captain Hook by pushing him into the water where a crocodile eats him alive. Before the others can reach London, Peter flies ahead and attempts to bar the windows of the Darling children's room so that the children think that the Darling parents have forgotten all about the children. But he changes his mind when he sees the distress of Mrs. Darling. Again, something that to me kind of points to that might be his mom. And the Darling siblings? might be his siblings. Anyway, that's my own personal take. But in the end, Mr. and Mrs. Darling adopt the Lost Boys. But Peter? Peter rejects the offer and remains in Neverland forever and takes Wendy with him. The story goes on to say that over the years, Peter refuses to engage with Wendy's attempts of suggesting a, quote, grown-up notion, like a relationship, a committed relationship. But he does still have children with her, and he brings Wendy's eventual daughter and granddaughter to visit the Darlings throughout the years. So, if my theory is kind of correct, sounds like he... I mean, this interpretation would then lead to Peter Pan has a, a, um, a sister. No, Peter Pan has a child with his sister. And that child then is assaulted by some lost boys in Neverland and has a grandchild of his. And he brings those children 
back to the darlings. Um, I think, you know, to maintain that family connection and to see his mom again. That's my theory, but do you have another? Let me know in the comments down below. And now that we have finished tale number six, Peter Pan, now we move on to tale seven, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Now, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, it's already considered Disney's darkest animation because of its themes of sin and lust. The original novel by Victor Hugo looms with despair persistently. As you might remember, the end of Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame it ends with Frollo being the only one to fall to his death, and Quasimodo, Esmeralda, and Phoebus survive as heroes. However, the original novel of The Hunchback of Notre Dame has a starkly different ending than the beloved musical. In the original, Quasimodo is locked away in the cathedral at his guardian Frollo's beckoning and is ordered to kidnap the bewitching dancer Esmeralda for Frollo's attempts at seduction. Saved by Captain Phoebus, whom she falls for, Quasimodo is subjected to public humiliation as punishment and is saved when Esmeralda gives him water. Frollo becomes jealous and kills Phoebus, and when Frollo escapes, Esmeralda is the only suspect for Phoebus's stabbing. Esmeralda is charged with murder, and she is put on trial and sentenced to death when she, unaware that Phoebus is still alive, falsely confesses to witchcraft and murder. Quasimodo fails to protect Esmeralda, and Frollo releases her to an angry mob. She is eventually hanged, and in his despair, Quasimodo pushes Frollo from the tower. The ending fast forwards to years later and sees the skeletons of a hunchbacked man and a woman embracing in Esmeralda's tomb. The end. But wait, there is another story. How about tale number eight, The Fox and the Hound? That can't be dark, can it? I'll let you decide. I know what you're thinking. The Disney version is harrowing AF anyway, and how could the original be any worse? Well, the original novel sees Todd, the fox, and Copper, the hound, who are friends from childhood, pitted against each other by the farmer and owner of the dog, Chief. Todd ends up killing Chief, at which point the farmer orders Copper to chase after Todd, a chase that will lead to Todd dying of exhaustion. After Todd has died due to his pursuit of copper, the farmer then shoots copper. So, yeah, I feel like the original was even more harrowing than the Disney version for sure. That's sad. Why? Why? So we... He pitted the childhood friends against each other and then made one of the friends essentially kill the other friend. And then he came home having done what he was instructed to do. And the farmer kills the dog too. And why? Ay. Yeah, okay. This one I prefer the Disney version. 100%. Oh, I'm almost afraid. Okay, tale number nine, Rapunzel slash Tangled. The original story of Rapunzel is actually centered around sex and pregnancy. You heard me, sex and pregnancy. First, Rapunzel is given to the witch because her father stole herbs from the witch's garden to satisfy her pregnant mother's cravings. As the years went by, Rapunzel was confined to the witch's tower. When eventually a prince turns up unannounced at the tower, he falls in love with Rapunzel and the two begin meeting at night, every night, for some evidently unprotected lovemaking. 
because Rapunzel soon becomes pregnant herself. Of course, she has no idea what pregnancy is, but even so, the witch banishes her to the desert to give birth on her own in the sand. The witch also taunts the prince when he returns to see Rapunzel the next night, and she isn't there. It causes him such shock and despair that he leaps from the tower and lands in a thorn bush. This thorn bush renders him blind because the thorns, they gouged out his eyes. We do get a happy ending, though, because the prince somehow ends up finding Rapunzel and her tears cure his blindness. And maybe now we know why they took so long to make another Rapunzel slash Tangled movie. <laughs> Yee, that's pretty dark. I don't recall seeing um, get a pregnant Rapunzel or babies or you know, gouged out eyes, but, um, yikes. Okay, guys, we have one more story tonight before we go. And that's tale number 10, Hansel and Gretel. There are many dark predecessors to the Brothers Grimm version of this creepy tale. And some of them have no happy endings, the most disturbing rendition is a Romanian story called The Little Boy and the Wicked Stepmother. It's a story of two children, a little boy and a little girl, who are taken way deep into the forest by their wicked stepmother and abandoned there. But they do find their way back home by following a trail of ashes. Upon their return home, however, their stepmother kills the boy and orders his sister, the little girl, to cook him into a family meal. The little girl proceeds to debone her brother and places the bones in a nook in the tree outside and then prepares her brother for a meal. The boy's father unknowingly eats his own son. But the little girl did save the boy's heart. She nestled her brother's heart in the crook in the tree with his bones. Over time, the heart and the bones gave birth to her brother in the form of a cuckoo bird. And in her attempts to kill the cuckoo bird, the stepmother dies. So, at least she gets her comeuppance. And that's the end of Hansel and Gretel. It ends with uh, Hansel getting killed upon returning home after being uh, essentially, like, t taken, driven out to the, the woods and dropped off, left to survive the wilderness with his sister and they find their way back home only for stepmom to order the sister to cook the brother and the sister is so distraught that she keeps pieces of the brother and hides them in the tree and then he becomes from the the, the heart and the bones and the tree get, they turn him into a cuckoo bird he's reborn as a cuckoo bird and uh, some accounts I read, he pecked the stepmother's eyes out and then proceeded to attack peck her until he ate all her flesh. And that's how she died, if anyone was curious. Um, and that's where the story pretty abruptly ends. And, uh, yeah, that's the end. Hansel and Gretel, my friends. So... Those were the 10 stories that I pulled from the crypt for you to enjoy. So did you? Did you enjoy the stories? Have you ever heard of any of these origin stories before? And did any of these stories change your outlook on some of Disney's most beloved movies? Do you know of others that you'd like me to cover in the future? Let me know in the comments below. And with that, my friends, 
since you behaved so well. I guess I'll allow you to leave. Mind your step on the way out. You don't want to get your foot caught in a trap now, do you? Leave a thumbs up at the door and subscribe so I can invite you back to the next Tales from the Cur Whipped. Until next time, stay safe, my friends. Thank you.